This plane is widely regarded as one of the worst aircraft designs of all time. Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from my hotel room here in Jakarta, Indonesia. Today we're talking about some of the weirdest airplanes that ever took to the skies, or in some cases tried to take to the skies. <laughs> when it comes to human ingenuity, aviation has seen it all. Brilliant breakthroughs, bold experiments and Let's be honest, some truly bizarre designs. So what are we waiting for? And let's get started. First up, let's talk about the Spruce Goose, officially known as the Hughes H4 Hercules. This plane was the brainchild of billionaire Howard Hughes. Picture this, it's the 1940s and wartime shipping lanes are under constant threat. Hughes comes up with the idea of building a massive cargo plane to transport troops and supplies. But there was a catch to conserve metal for the war effort. The plane was made almost entirely out of wood. At 218 feet wide, it remains the largest wingspan of any plane in history. And there's the kicker, it only flew once. That's right, this giant wooden plane took off for only a single brief flight in 1947 and never flew again. Some people thought Hughes was a genius, others thought he was, well, nuts. Either way, the Spruce Goose is an icon of aviation history. Next on the list is the Caprioni CA-60 Novi Plano. <laughs> this one is a real head scratcher. Imagine a plane with nine wings stacked onto three sets of triplanes. It was designed by Italian aviation pioneer Gianni Caprioni in the 1920s as a prototype for a transatlantic passenger aircraft. Now the idea was ambitious, it could supposedly carry 100 passengers across the Atlantic, but here's what actually happened. The plane barely made it off the ground <laughs> on its first test flight. It flew for just a few hundred feet before crashing into a lake. The wreck was so bad that Caprioni never rebuilt it. Some people think it was ahead of its time, but others say it was doomed from the start. Either way, the Caprioni CA-60 is a fascinating example of how aviation dreams don't always take off. <laughs> Speaking of strange designs, let's move on to the Vought V-173 Flying Pancake. Yep, you heard it right, the Flying Pancake. This plane was developed during World War II as an experimental fighter aircraft. Its unique design featured a flat disc-shaped body with propellers on each wingtip. The idea was to create an aircraft that could take off and land in short distances, ideal for operating from aircraft carriers. Now, the Flying Pancake did actually fly and pilots said it is surprisingly stable in the air, but it had a few quirks. <laughs> For one, its unusual shape caused major drag issues and wasn't very fast, and by the time it was ready for serious testing, jet engines were becoming the norm, and propeller-driven fighters like the Pancake were basically obsolete. Still, you've got to give them credit for creativity. <laughs> Sorry for the quick interruption, just wanted to say if you want to become a pilot and you want to inform yourself on all the steps that you need to beg, or if you need a supportive community, if you are already on your way on becoming a pilot, check out the link below and join my Patreon group. You will not regret it. There's a huge group of people who are just willing to help. We're gonna have regular Zoom calls. We're gonna have direct messaging. We can chat with each other. It's gonna be great. Check it out and see you on the other side. See ya. Another oddball in aviation history is the Convair Model 118 Convair car. This was an attempt to combine a car and a plane into one vehicle. Imagine driving to the airport, attaching wings to your car, and just taking off into the sky. It sounds like something from a James Bond movie, right? Well, in the late 1940s, Convair actually built a prototype. Now, the Convair car looked like a small airplane attached to a car body, and it could indeed fly. However, during a test flight, it crash landed after running out of fuel. I mean, <laughs> the incident scared off investors and the project was then abandoned. Today, it's a reminder that while the idea of a flying car is cool, it's not as easy to pull it off as it sounds. Let's shift gears into the Bartini Briev A14. This is all the Russian I can 
Nevertheless, this Soviet aeroplane looks like something straight out of a science fiction movie. Designed in the 1970s, it was intended to counteract US submarine activity. What made it unique was its amphibious design. It could take off from water and fly at very low altitudes over the sea. But that's not all. The VVA-14 had inflatable pontoons to help water landings. It was supposed to incorporate vertical takeoff and landing capabilities too. Unfortunately, it faced endless technical problems. The project was then eventually scrapped, leaving only one prototype behind. Even so, it's remembered as one of the most ambitious, amphibious <laughs> aircraft designs of its time. Now, we can't talk about weird planes without mentioning the NASA AD-1. This experimental aircraft was built in the late 1970s to test an unusual feature, an oblique wing. Unlike traditional wings that are fixed, the AD-1's wing could pivot up to 60 degrees. The idea was that the design could reduce drag and improve efficiency at high speeds. In practice, the AD-1 did work, kind of. It flew successfully, but the pivoting wing made it incredibly difficult to control. Test pilots described it as being a bit like riding a bike with a wobbly front wheel. <laughs> the program was discontinued, but it's still a fascinating example of how engineers push the boundaries of what's possible. Speaking of pushing boundaries, have you ever heard of the McDonnell XF-85 Goblin? Now, this tiny fighter was designed during World War II as a parasite fighter that could be carried inside a larger bomber. Now, the idea was that the bomber could then release the Goblin mid-flight to defend against enemy aircraft. Now, the idea is fantastic. The Goblin was small, so small, in fact, that it didn't even have a landing gear. Instead, it had to dock with its host bomber to land again. <laughs> Test flights showed that docking was incredibly difficult and the plane's performance was underwhelming. The project was scrapped, but the Goblin remains one of the quirkiest ideas in aviation history. Finally, let's talk about the Christmas Bullet. This plane is widely regarded as one of the worst aircraft designs of all time. Built in 1918 by Dr. William Christmas, it was intended to be a high-performance fighter. But here's the thing, Dr. Christmas had no formal training in aeronautics. The bullet's wings were not braced, which meant that they couldn't handle the stress of flight. On its first flight, the wings literally fell off and the plane crashed. Incredibly, Dr. Christmas insisted the design was sound and built a second prototype, which also crashed. Today, the Christmas bullet is a cautionary tale about what happens when ambition outweighs expertise. <laughs> So what's the takeaway from all of this? Aviation history is full of bold ideas and wild experiments. Some of them changed the world while others crashed and burned, sometimes literally, sadly. But each of the planes, no matter how strange or flawed, represents a step in humanity's journey to conquer the skies. And that's it for today. If you have more weird aircraft designs you know about and would like me to do a video about, please let me know in the comment section below. And on that bombshell, here is your checklist. Subscribe to my channel, check activate the notification bell, check follow my Instagram account, check perform a touch and go at my website, check and don't forget. A good pilot is always learning, wishing all the best. Your Captain Joe out of Indonesia, Jakarta. <laughs>